All right, so this is Terraform unit testing with Open Policy Agent. Uh, Open Policy Agent is also known as OPA. So who am I? Uh, my name is Dave Strabel. I am a Microsoft Global Open Source Architect. Uh, so I help customers implement open source technologies in Azure. Uh, if you want to follow me, I am Dave underscore Strabel on Twitter, and I am also a huge fan of the Commodore 64. Uh, so to get started, why do we need uh, unit testing for infrastructure as code? Uh, so some of the reasons we really look at doing unit testing for infrastructure as code is really to follow kind of the same processes we, if we were developing applications. So being able to reduce the risk of changes to any type of infrastructure we may be uh, creating, updating, uh, or modifying at any one given time. So we also wanna gain insight into that impact when we are making those changes. Uh, so we, can, we really want to learn from uh, those changes we're going to make uh, and really build confidence in our code base around our infrastructure. So what does it look like when you have no unit testing for infrastructure as code? Uh, I would say it kind of looks like this. You have Bob having a heart attack, John's over there uh, running Terraform destroy all over the place uh, to make up uh, for the missed changes he had. So. How can we do this? There's multiple ways here. Uh, the one I will be talking about is Open Policy Agent. So Open Policy Agent is part of the CNCF. Uh, so it's one of the incubator projects uh, that's, hope it, that's hosted by the Cloud Native Compute Foundation. Uh, so it's an open source project. Uh, its main really goal, it's really more of a general purpose policy engine. Uh, so you can see some of the different technologies uh, that you can integrate with it here. So it's just not for Terraform, uh, but you can use it for things like Kubernetes or uh, companies like Netflix use it for uh, authorization and SSH type authorization. Uh, other companies like uh, Capital One use it uh, in their Kubernetes environment to provide protection around uh, the API. Uh, today we'll be talking about more of uh, unit testing and risk manage management with Terraform. Uh, the language it uses is called Rego. Uh, so there is a little learning curve uh, with its actual language. Uh, the nice thing about it, uh, like I kind of mentioned here, is that it's just not for Terraform. When you start using this, you can implement it really across the entire stack. Uh, so you're not just learning this new policy language, uh, just for one piece of your infrastructure. So when we look at OPA and what it does with Terraform, uh, think about uh, how you kind of write policies. And when you build in these policies, we're going to build these policies to really test changes to our Terraform code. Uh, so these policies are going to be around different things like risk management. So if, you know, if we want to automate uh, some of our deployments and updates uh, with our Terraform code, not all those, some of those updates are going to be very risky. So this allows us to really write policy around that. So we can automate some of that uh, and we can also gate check some of that. So things that are more risky need manual approval. Uh, it's also going to really help us sanity check uh, our Terraform changes. Uh, I will show an example here later of how we can do that and kind of how we can score our different changes. Uh, some other the things that uh, OPA with Terraform can really do is catch problems with our actual code. Uh, it can we can compare kind of data throughout our Terraform code uh, and apply different policies to that code. So how OPA is implemented, OPA can be ran as a local binary or you can set up OPA to run as a daemon and uh, curl, that, curl its API endpoint. 
So when I say service here, that service may be uh, Terraform, it may be Kubernetes, it may just be uh, some type of identity system. You can really start integrating any of these external systems into OPA, because what OPA does, it just takes JSON data and compares it against the policy you write for OPA. Uh, so your service loads in that JSON data to OPA, that JSON data stored, and then it runs against that actual uh, OPA policy. Uh, so what this kind of looks like, uh, since we can either run that as a um, local binary or we could implement it, like I said, as a daemon service where we just curl the endpoint, uh, in, our pi in our CICD pipelines, we can integrate this. So uh, for the example of risk management, so how we can compute risk of our actual change and what that blast radius of that change is, we would implement this in our CID CD pipeline there. Uh, within that CICD pipeline, we would also include our policy with our Terraform code, and then we would load that data into uh, OPA to evaluate that policy. Uh, Open also allows you to, it also has a auditing API. Uh, so an example of this, we could uh, look at, say, our cloud environment. We could look to see uh, if it's under, if things are under the control of Terraform or if they're not under control of Terraform. And then we can also audit the policies to make sure they adhere to the policies we defined uh, within OPA. So just a kind of example here of a OPA policy and using a uh, Rego. Uh, this one here is basically scoring uh, different type of operations that we may perform uh, on different resources that we write in Terraform. Uh, so basically what this is taking is a, a delete, create, and modify, and it's applying a score and weighting that. Uh, from that score, then we could come up with uh, some metrics around what the blast radius is. Things that if the blast radius is, say, less than 30, then uh, we can automate that change automatically. If it's greater than that, then we may have to go through a manual approval uh, uh, to deploy our resources with Terraform. Uh, some of the use cases, uh, I've kind of mentioned some of these, uh, especially from kind of using it to automatically uh, approve different Terraform changes, uh, because some of our Terraform changes are going to be very small. Some are going to be bigger changes where maybe we're changing firewall rules or we're changing authorization uh, and identity management where we wouldn't actually want to have that automated. We may want to uh, have a manual approver of that. Uh, we can also embed this policy uh, into our deployment system. So we can catch those different problems that would arise in our Terraform code. Uh, so it allows us to really look at from a staging to production, uh, the differences there, and also apply those policies to both type of environments. So to do a quick demo here, So in here, I have, um, all right, in this one, I have two different resources uh, that I'm creating. So in this example, I'm just creating a resource group, and then I'm creating a storage account. Uh, so this change is something that we may want to automate, where my other Terraform plan here, I have a lot of different resources where I'm creating virtual networks, I'm also creating subnets, uh, also firewall rules with these network security groups. So how I would evaluate these is I would write this Rego policy here. This Rego policy, uh, essentially what it's importing is a package library here uh, that's going to analyze um, my actual Terraform files here. So this one here, uh, we're just going to give it some parameters. And what we're going to do is set an acceptable score for our automated authorization and deployment of these resources. 
Uh, so you can see here, I'm setting a blast radius to equal 30. And then in uh, here, I'm also setting, I'm defining weights for the different uh, resources I may be creating. So this one's creating a storage account in a subnet, uh, something like a delete of a resource that you may have. Those you may want to have a very high weighted score to. Uh, because you may want somebody to manually approve anytime something's deleted. On a create, we may have a um, smaller weight for that, and on modify, that may be a little different uh, for you also. Uh, here, I'm just defining what those actual resource types are. Uh, if we go down a little further, uh, here's where I'm adding one in that will automatically deny this change. So anything that touches a network security group here, uh, it's automatically going to deny that. Uh, this one I kind of already showed. Uh, all we're doing is computing the score for each of these resources. So it's taking these, uh, this delete, create, and modify, and it's taking those, adding those scores up, and then it will uh, return the sum of the scores of what we're changing in our Terraform plan. Uh, then as I mentioned, this NSG one, this is something that's going to uh, deny those changes because that's something that we manually want to review if we're changing uh, network firewall rules there. Uh, then down here is just really kind of the Terraform library here uh, for uh, Rego. Uh, this Terraform library here uh, is just defining uh, how it's going to look at that actual Terraform file and what it's going to uh, add up from like account of deletions, account of creates, and that. Uh, so the one thing you have to do in here is that you have to have uh, the format has to be JSON to um, to evaluate the policy against your actual Terraform plan. Uh, so the one thing I will do here, so the first thing is I'm going to do a Terraform plan uh, on this actual um, resource group that I'm creating with the network security group and that to show that. The first thing I'm going to do is put this into standard output. This will then take it to standard output. Then there are different type of parsers that you can use. Uh, the one I'm using is just an NPM package. It's called parse terraform plan. Uh, and what I'm doing is then outputting that plan to JSON. Once I've outputted that plan to JSON, then I can run uh, OPA against that. So it's evaluating uh, this terraform policy here called terraform.rego. Uh, and our input is going to be our Terraform plan .json. Uh, so essentially all that did was change all this into uh, JSON uh, from HCL. Then I will go ahead and run this plan. And it looks like I actually have a failure here, so the demo gods aren't with me, but I will just show this real quick instead of watching me troubleshoot that. But what we should have actually seen here was something like this, where we had a score of 100 and approve is false. We would have seen something like this. Uh, and then I can feed that into my CI CD pipeline, which could either automate that deployment of uh, our Terraform resources or it could have uh, automatically denied based on the score, or the approve uh, within this JSON. So that covers the demo here. Uh, the biggest thing you're going to have to learn to start out with using Open Policy Agent is uh, this kind of uh, Rego policy language in here. Uh, it can have a little bit of a learning curve. Uh, but there's a lot of good resources out there to kind of start learning this. Uh, and like I said before, you can use this with other systems in your stack. So it's just not going to be for uh, Terraform.
All right, so what did we learn? Uh, so OPA gives you this fine-grained policy control over your Terraform plans, allows you to do things like approval, allows you to weight scores of uh, what the blast radius is of your actual Terraform plan. Uh, you can also bring in external data. So you could bring in authorization policies, meaning that based on who the user is of running that plan, maybe it's automatically approved or automatically denied. So maybe if we have uh, developers that are trying to uh, run that Terraform plan that you have, maybe those are all denied where your operations teams automatically get approved when they're running their Terraform plans. So it's really flexible in how the data that you can import into it because it's just evaluating against JSON data so it's just parsing through that actual data for you. Uh, so just a couple of references here. Uh, so if you want to learn more about Open Policy Agent, you can go to openpolicyagent.org. There is also a Slack channel, uh, so Slack openpolicyagent.org. Uh, it's very active in there. If you're having any troubles, kind of getting through uh, one of these policies. There's a lot of people in there to help. Uh, and I'll say the co-founders are very active in there uh, on this project and are always willing to help people out uh, to kind of start learning these. I would also say if you are uh, starting to learn these policies and starting to write them, uh, that you also contribute those policies back. Uh, they do have a open, uh, a GitHub repo that you can actually commit uh, your kind of sample policies. Uh, because as more of these are shared, it's going to help a lot of users out uh, to be able to use this. Because a lot of these policies are not just going to be kind of your own domain knowledge, it's going to apply uh, across different industries. Uh, so Open Policy Agent isn't the only way. Uh, there's other testing frameworks that you can do. Uh, that are just for Terraform. So TerraTest and Kitchen Terraform, which is based off of uh, Kitchen for Chef. So those are also other testing frameworks. I think at the end of the day, as long as you're doing unit tests, that's great. Uh, I think there's some advantages to using the Open Policy Agent. Uh, but again, just make sure that you are running unit tests uh, against your Terraform plans. And I will plug HashiConf. Uh, just for the fact that I find it one of the best conferences I've ever been to, and it's well worth the money and time uh, that you will spend there. And I believe their CFP is still open. 